Uh, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Atlantic Council. I'm, uh, I'm Jason Marzak. I'm the director of the Latin America Economic Growth Initiative here at the Adrian Arst Latin America Center. And on behalf of our center, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today for a conversation with Argentina's Secretary of Trade, Miguel Brown, on issues surrounding the new outlook for Argentina's economy. A special welcome to the members of the diplomatic community who are here today, and I'd also like to thank our partners for this event, the Council of the Americas, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. And I'd also a special welcome to uh, our, our old friend Shunko Rojas, who is now the head of Argentina's National Commission for Foreign Trade, who put together this visit. So thanks, thanks Shunko. Secretary Brown, I'd like to first congratulate you, uh, I know not just, not just on behalf of the Atlantic Council our Center, but probably everybody in this room on your new post, and congratulate your president, Mauricio Macri, for both his victory in November and the bold but not easy un reforms undertaken in just the last few months. We are incredibly bullish on Argentina, and we are thrilled that Secretary Brown, uh, the first high-ranking official from the new government uh, in Argentina to visit Washington, is here today to outline the trade and investment priorities of the new administration. You can see from the crowd here and the people standing in the back, the excitement and enthusiasm around the new direction of Argentina and the opportunities to work together. The Adrian Arch Latin America Center, for those who may not know, is dedicated to highlighting transformations in the region, and few places is that as, as apparent as in Argentina today. President Obama's announcement of his March 23rd to 24th trip to Argentina is a confirmation of this excitement in the new Argentina and is generate, that, that is generating a more market-friendly government that seeks greater partnerships with the, across the world, especially with the United States and with Europe. Even though challenges lie ahead, it is clear that this new administration is off to a fast and great start. This is how the next hour is going to work. Uh, after I introduce Secretary Braun, he will give remarks here from the podium. After that, I will have a fun and lively conversation with the Secretary for about 20, 25 minutes. And then we'll leave the rest of the hour open to questions and answer from everybody here. Feel free to get out your phones, but only to live tweet. And if you're going to do that, please use the hashtag ACNewArgentina. Uh, also, if you're watching via webcast, you can tweet at us with your questions to at ACLATAM. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Miguel Braun, uh, Argentina's Secretary of Trade and one of the key government officials of the new Macri administration. Uh, beforehand, Secretary Braun was previously director of the Pensar F Foundation, the think tank of pro Macri's uh, political party. 20 years ago, he obtained his degree in economics at the University of San Andres, and he went straight on to Harvard, where he completed a master's and a PhD in economics. When he returned to Argentina, he co-founded the Public Policies Implementation Center for Equality and Growth, uh, better known as, as CPAC, which is one of the th top think tanks in Latin America, an organization that, that I, like many others in this room, have likely worked with over the years. In 2012, he beca became director of the Banco Ciudad of the city of Buenos Aires. He then worked as a consultant for numerous organizations, including here in Washington with the uh, IDB and also with UNICEF. Uh, it's clear that Secretary Braun has a, a, a fantastic background and pedigree and that the new Macri government is, is, uh, is, uh, is lucky to have him as their, as their Secretary of Trade. So with that, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Secretary of Trade, Miguel Brown. Miguel, thank you for being here. All right. Well, thanks for the kind words. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be here today and see so many friendly faces and uh, people I've, I've seen over the years here in Washington and, and in Buenos Aires. We're all very excited with what's going on in Argentina and we look forward to working, work with you over the next months and years in cementing the friendship between Argentina and the U.S. and um, with the values embodied in the Atlantic uh, Council that we were discussing earlier. Um, Argentina is a fantastic country. And um, if you're here, you already know it, so uh, you know, I'm not gonna start preaching about that. But, but it is, I mean, it, it, it's full of resources, it's full of opportunity, it has great people. We are the eighth largest country in the world. We have fantastic, natural resources in terms of agriculture, in terms of energy, potential for renewable energy. And these resources 
place Argentina in a unique position to contribute to the challenges that the world is facing today. Argentina can be a constructive partner in terms of food security, in terms of feeding the world. According to um, several uh, organizations, Argentina has uh, a huge potential, a bio, uh, bioenergetic potential, I guess you, they call it. I'm not a scientist, but uh, it's, it's uh, let's say it, it has about 2.4% of this, uh, let's say, global biological potential, and only 0.6% of the population. So we could be exporting and feeding a larger percentage of the world that we are today. Today, Argentina produces food for around 400 million people, and we believe that that number could be doubled over the next decade. At the same time, Argentina has the second largest uh, reserves of non-conventional gas in Baca Muerta and the fourth uh, of uh, non-conventional oil. Of course, speaking about you know, energy today is difficult because the price of energy is not at its most exciting level. But obviously, investments in these, in these sectors aim at the long term and aim at thinking of the future of, a, of the global economy, and we are sure that over the next years, these areas will have huge potential. But at the same time, we are concerned about sustainability, and Argentina has a huge potential in terms of renewable energy. We have in the north of the country, apparently one of the highest concentrations of sunlight, so we could, we could be producing solar energy at a you know, very fast pace. And in the south, the winds, the winds, they just blow you away. In fact, they've blown away many of these new turbines that they've been putting up to produce wind energy because the winds are so strong. Obviously, we believe that technology will improve and we will be able to harness the power of these winds in order to contribute to energy security and to sustainability. Now, of course, Argentina has this potential, and there's this old joke that you know, people generally associate with Brazil, but it applies to Argentina too, right? Saying, you know, Brazil is always the, is the country of the future, and it always will be. Uh, well, Argentina has this great potential, and it always will have, right? Unless we really do something about it. And unfortunately, the past decade has shown the risks that a country blessed with the resources like Argentina faces when uh, we are subject to some of the inherent volatilities in the global economy. In 2001, Argentina suffered maybe the worst crisis in the past century. GDP fell uh, over about 11%, unemployment reached 25%, poverty was near 50%. And naturally, the reaction to that crisis was a shift towards populist politics. We see this concern today in Europe, where problems in the economy lead to the rise of more extreme and, and more polarized politics. And Argentina is no exception. We suffered that. And unfortunately, that move towards populist politics coincided with the strongest commodity boom also in the past century. So populist experiments, which usually last a short time, because they quickly run into fiscal and monetary constraints, lasted for 12 years. And we won the elections, President Macri won the elections by a very close margin. And this, I think, is a, um, a, a cautionary tale in, in that we have to be very prudent and very careful with our institutions and with the underpinnings of democracy in order to avoid these, these risks of, of movement towards populist politics because they can, they can be long-lasting and have long-lasting effects. Now, that, that is what happened in Argentina during the past decade, obviously. This, this move towards populism led to more inward-looking growth, to uh, a closed economy. I was yesterday at the FTC uh, talking about potential co collaboration in technical issues in competition policy, and they were saying, look, you're the first Argentine to come here in 15 years. So, you know, <laughs> this is... Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a risk, but today we're very optimistic that Argentina can put behind this past decade and look forward and exploit this, this potential. The reason we're optimistic is that we're back on track. 
In the past two months, President Macri has shown his commitment for, towards a new Argentina. He has placed three highly challenging objectives, which are to end poverty, to end drug trafficking, and to strengthen our democracy. These three objectives, which are very broad, very ambitious, I believe capture the essence of what we're working to do. And a key part of achieving these objectives is collaboration with different economies, and especially with the US, with Europe, and um, with other countries with which we share the values of democracy, human rights, and global cooperation. And this, this commitment has, has been amply shown in the past couple of months. President Macri has, has traveled, he's gone to Davos. He's, uh, in the past couple of weeks with our team, we've been to, to Brazil, to Mexico. Now we're here, in a couple of weeks we're going to Europe, and we're really sending out the message that Argentina is once again open for business and ready to engage constructively in the global economy. At the same time, we have normalized the exchange rate. There were serious problems that most of you know about with, with uh, the exchange rate and with, and with uh, currency controls and capital controls. We have normalized the trade regime. Now it's, you know, it's very easy to import and export now from Argentina. We've reduced export taxes, and we're working on perfecting these instruments as, as we go along. At the same time, President Macri has installed a competent economic team, both in the finance ministry and in the central bank. And this team is working on a serious inflation targeting program, which aims at reducing inflation in Argentina over the next three or four years without suffering a serious cost in terms of, of lost output. Uh, we are rapidly working towards settling the holdouts issue. Uh, you've seen the, the news in the past couple of days. There's Every day there are more and more uh, funds that are agreeing with the proposals of the Argentine government, and we hope to finish that very quickly in order to be, once again, a full partner in global capital markets. And finally, as I, as I mentioned before, we are reinstating the, our antitrust commission, and this is a key, a key part of President Macri's plan. We need the system to be legitimate. We need Argentines to believe that everybody gets a fair chance both as a consumer and as an uh, entrepreneur and small enterprises have to believe, and, and this has to be a fact, that they can compete on an equal ground with large companies. The opportunities for investment are great in this new context. We believe that Argentina has fantastic opportunities in agribusiness. This is, this is very clear. Over the, next, over the past couple of decades, the growth in production of soybean especially has, has been exponential and new technologies and in innovations from our farmers combined with work from in other countries is allowing for strong, higher production and, and lower costs, both in soybean and in, in, other, in, other, um, in other areas of agribusiness. Our challenge now is also to add value to this production. And essentially, we believe that for that, we need entrepreneurs and finance in order to harness the, the, comp the competitiveness that we have in this, in this sector. At the same time, I mentioned the energy sector. Over the next 10 years, we believe Argentina needs more or less $230 billion of investment. In the mining sector, we have one of the greatest concentrations of lithium in the world. We, we're very strong in copper and silver. There are huge opportunities there. Once again, the prices in the short run are low, but you know, in the short run, in, in the medium run, these, these change. Um, we have huge potential in, in high value ad added services. Argentina is one of the top exporters of audiovisual um, products like uh, publicity and, and other film products. We're great in software too. Last year, uh, yesterday I was meeting with people from Apple here and they were telling me that the highest selling app in Latin America it was a program uh, written by an Argentine. It's, a, it's like a trivial pursuit kind of game. So, you know, we, we have, I think, huge potential there. Uh, but in general, what we believe and what President Macri believes is that Argentina needs a strong flow of real investment into our economy. 50% of the imports into the U.S. come from, com from U.S. companies themselves that are installed in other parts of the world. Clearly, we want U.S. companies to come to invest in Argentina, and part of that production 
to be exported back to the, to the US and to other parts of the world. And this applies to companies from all over the world. Argentina needs a technological upgrade, an infrastructure upgrade. Uh, we need capital to, uh, to um, harness the potential of our human capital. Argentina is one of the countries with the best preparation in terms of human capital in the region. It's a relatively safe and peaceful place. It is always pretty high up in these rankings. So we're very optimistic that with this new government, with these new, new opportunities, there will be a strong flow of investment that will harness this potential. We, we see that there are challenges ahead. The world is in turmoil, obviously. There are risks of a global downturn. There are risks in trade and finance. But we're optimistic that Argentina will be able to adapt to these challenges and be a constructive partner in helping the world deal with these problems. One good thing about the volatility in Argentina over the past three decades is that Argentines, both companies and individuals, are prepared for volatility. We're very resilient and adaptable. <laughs> So, you know, and, and I'm sure many of you have worked with Argentines here in Wall Street, et cetera, and, and the typical uh, statement is this, you know, they're, they're, they adapt very well to change. So we're ready for what's, what's coming. We're sure we can, we can contribute. Our companies have survived many of these challenges, and they're ready to compete in the world economy. We're very enthusiastic about this new era of engagement of Argentina, and we look forward to working with all of you over the next few years. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, Secretary Braun. I think uh, excellent remarks, and I think those remarks really capture the, the excitement and what, what everybody is thinking in this room about uh, the new direction in, in Argentina. And as you say, without a doubt, this administration is a complete turnaround from, from the previous 12 years, especially uh, in areas of trade and finance. You outlined a few uh, areas in your, in your remarks, everywhere from removing currency controls, uh, re uh, normalizing the trade regime, letting the peso float, um, striking a deal on the cusp of hopefully striking a deal with the holdout creditors, and in general, just bringing Argentina back into the international fold, as exemplified by your visit here and, and the many trips you've done. What, what are your plans in the next, let's look ahead a little bit, in the next mm -hmm. six months, uh, maybe even the next year, to build on some of this early euphoria mm -hmm. that these changes are generating in the international community? What are, what are some additional mm -hmm. things that, that you're planning on doing to really capture this? So one key area is really underpinning the foundations of the, of the new fiscal and monetary program. And that part of that is, is the deal with the holdouts. Uh, we really have to show that the macroeconomic plan is credible and that, in fact, we're going to go towards a, a reduction in inflation, uh, a more sustainable fiscal policy. And this, this entails both international engagement but also work at home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we have a, a, huge, a huge challenge in terms of improving the quality of public services, in terms of streamlining processes and, and overall having a more competitive uh, government uh, that can be a partner with new investors and with the private sector in Argentina. And, and you know, the, the, the changes are happening very quickly, and this is something that the President Macri said he would do during, during mm -hmm. the campaign. Of course, there are, there are some, of the, the, some domestically that, that are, are apprehensive about what some of these changes could mean, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, what this could mean so, so far is, you know, some short-term pains that might mm -hmm. be felt for the, for the need for medium to long-term growth. Mm -hmm. and so. How, how, are, how are you balancing this need for quick implementation of policies that will attract mm -hmm. FDI with, a, a sh at the same time, making sure that, that p some domestic populations are, are not fearful of what those changes might actually bring? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a really important point. We believe in gradualism. Argentina tried in the 90s to reform its economy for, after several decades of imports, uh, inward-looking uh, growth, import substitution, etc. And we tried to do everything in two years. Obviously, in the short run, the results were fantastic. The value of assets multiplied by five in a couple of years. And it seemed like you know, Argentina was on the cover of The Economist. Everyth mm. seemed, everything seemed fantastic. But those changes ex post turned out not to be sustainable, in part because we took many shortcuts in the 90s. For example, the fixed exchange rate. For example, not reforming deeper issues in terms of fiscal policy. Um, so 
we, you know, as a government, we've learned from past Argentine history and we've learned from other experiences in the world. And we're very excited, for example, uh, thinking about what Australia did in the 1980s. Australia went for a deep reform program, but it took 15 years, right? They didn't do everything overnight. We believe that change has to be gradual. It has to be clear for a, a strong majority of the people that the change is in favor of the average worker and not something that just favors investors. Yeah. So we're, we're working very hard on making this change sustainable. That's great. And I think that you know, one, of the, one of the things that insofar as a change that we've seen already is just this international euphoria uh, around what, what this new Argentina looks like. And obviously, President Obama just announced that he'll be visiting mm -hmm. uh, Argentina um, March uh, 23rd to 20, 24th. What do, you, what do you see insofar as specifically for the United States? You're, you're, this is obviously, as you mentioned, one of your first international mm -hmm. trips. What could the US, US government, but also the US business community, besides um, investing in Argentina, mm -hmm. but what role do you see uh, insofar as helping the Macri administration mm -hmm. to implement some of these changes? Well, as I said, I mean, it, it's very important for change to be sustainable. And sometimes in that euphoria, it, from, you know, investors obviously we want investors to be euphoric. We want investors to go to Argentina. We want them to invest. But from the government point of view, there are many times issues on the bilateral agenda in which there's you know, if euphoria in terms of let's move forward quickly. And sometimes these changes require some time. And sometimes they have political, political costs in the short run. So what we aim for with the US is a, a constructive dialogue, making clear where Argentina wants to go understanding what the US expectations are, and working together on making a sustainable path. Yeah. And we, we, we think that that's very, very important. And, you know, collaborating strategically in order to manage deep reforms, sustainable reforms that change some fundamental institutions, some fundamental problems in Argentina, to avoid a potential reversal to a, a populist uh, yeah. sort of style yeah. government. And, and let, let me add just one yeah. more thing. I mean. Um, we believe Argentina has to be a strategic partner with the US, with Europe, in terms of consolidating democracy and, and human rights and, and global integration in the world. Argentina has been a very erratic partner in, in that sense throughout its history. And we believe that that is unfortunate. At the same time, we believe that the only way to change that and to make Argentina a positive permanent partner is to really work on the underlying deep institutional determinants of that volatility. And for that, we need a lot of help and a lot of collaboration. So if you could lay out, we're here in Washington, obviously p folks here who are in the, in the US government, if you could lay out your you know, top priorities, maybe some uh, specific priorities that you would like to see come about as a result of, of your visit here mm -hmm. and just from the, uh, from the administration in the next, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, the, the, in the next 10 months mm -hmm. uh, from the US administration, what would be some of those priorities that, sure. that the US could do? Well, we're very excited with President, Ob President Obama's visit, and uh, we believe that that will uh, provide a huge umbrella under which we can work on various areas. Um, minister Bullrich, uh, our, our uh, security minister, is going to be here in town this week, and uh, she's going to be working on cooperation in terms of uh, you know, fighting drug trafficking and other security areas. And we are, we've been talking with uh, the USTR, and we're going to be talking with Commerce about the possibility of increasing the opportunities for trade and investment between Argentina and the US, sort of resetting our, our commercial and economic relationship. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to, to working towards a constructive agreement. So that means many, many more trips to the FTC, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, hopefully, hopefully that will be part of the, of the deal. And you know, the people at the FTC were, were very nice. I was a bit worried that there was somebody from uh, the Department of Justice. And you know, I said, should I worry about FIFA or something like that? And she, she was OK, so. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> now, now, related to kind of Argentina's international perspective, um, one thing that was clear over the last uh, administration was with increasingly close ties with, with China. Um, and those ties were very much um, focused on short-term problems, the currency swaps and other things to, to help Argentina. And how, how, are, how is the new government looking at 
you know, building its relationship to more long-term and mutually beneficial types of, of arrangements. And it could be with China. So China Latin America is a new program that we're starting here at the uh, at the Atlanta Council. Mm -hmm. But even even beyond China, you know, um, you know, helping to focus more on these on these long-term solutions to, mm -hmm. to trade issues. Well, our, our foreign minister Susana Malcorra has been very clear in that Argentina has to return to a multilateral, constructive role in the world. We have to be in every forum, in every table, we have to, to be, uh, you know, sending out our message, discussing the issues that are important for us, and, and seeing how Argentina can be a constructive partner in the world. And this obviously includes China. China is a, is a very important commercial partner for Argentina. Uh, there are very important Chinese investments in Argentina, and we believe that we can have a very constructive relationship with China as part of a global strategy in which Argentina both contributes to the world and, and receives benefits from this, from this participation. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially in areas like energy and, and, mm -hmm. and, and agribusiness, in which mm -hmm. Argentina has been a, a very important partner with China, mm -hmm. and as you outlined, is looking to mm -hmm. expand the number of partners mm -hmm. in those particular sectors. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we have to, to look at the, <laughs> at the global map and work constructively you know, e everywhere we can. And there are many economies in Asia, apart from China, that have been growing strongly over the past 10, 15 years. In some of those, Argentina doesn't have an embassy, for mm -hmm. example. So we, you know, we really have to open our eyes, uh, look to, towards the long term, and really engage more constructively with, with every part of the world. Now, one, 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 the elephant room in the room here is, is Mercosur, which has traditionally been much more uh, inward, inward looking, a stark, I think, a stark contrast with the priorities that you lay out here so far as what should be those priorities of the, of the new Argentina government. Uh, that's construction next door. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh, if you hear an, a bang from time to time, that, that's, that's what that noise is. Um, and so it's, it's a, Mercosur is a stark contrast to the new Argentina government. And, and even in Brazil, President Rousseff has remarked on her openness to a new direction of, mm -hmm. of the bloc. Uh, and even yesterday, for those who might not have seen the news, um, President Vasquez of Uruguay, I saw mentioned that, that uh, Mercosur is now opening up, potentially opening up 93% of its trade to the European Union. Um, uh, competition is part of a, a deal, which is a 6% increase from what was proposed in, in October. So it seems like things are moving along with uh, an eventual Mercosur, potential EU trade deal. And President Hollande is, is, will be in Buenos Aires tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, uh, where I've seen he's uh, potentially striking up to, to 20, 20 deals, a very, a, a very mm -hmm. ambitious agenda in, yes. in, in a day, day and a half. So are we, are we witnessing as well the beginnings of change in Mercosur? And what is the role of Argentina in that regard? Well, I believe that uh, Mercosur faces a historic window of opportunity. It's the first time since Mercosur was instated that all four countries, uh, or the, the initial founders, really want to look out towards the world and engage constructively for different reasons. But Brazil today is very competitive. Its industry is ready to compete with the world. It wants to go out and, and engage in new trade agreements. Argentina clearly has stated uh, you know, that it wants to be a constructive partner in the world. And Uruguay and Paraguay, as small countries, always see a strong benefit from global integration. So I believe that Mercosur is, you know, faces a, a huge opportunity in, order, in going out to the world together. And in fact, we were in Brazil a couple of weeks ago and we talked about this. And we agree with our Brazilian counterparts that now is the time to, to go out together to the world. And in terms of the institutional functioning of Mercosur, there's an opportunity to re rediscuss some of these institutions that have stopped Mercosur from integrating constructively. And one of those is this idea that everything has to be decided by consensus, mm -hmm. which is something we agree upon. But consensus doesn't necessarily mean unanimity. And that is you know, something that we have to discuss with our Mercosur counterparts. Besides Europe, are there other priority areas of the world in which Mercosur would look? Not, I mean, not just, mm -hmm. tra not just uh, full fledged trade agreements, but other types of investment treaties? Yep. And what well, we're definitely looking at the Americas. I mean, my first trip, uh, bilateral trip, was to Mexico. And I think that in Mexico, there's huge opportunities for Argentina and for Mercosur. The Pacific Alliance obviously presents a, a great opportunity. And being you know, here in the US, we also think that Canada has a potential to sign a free trade agreement with Mercosur. Mm -hmm. And eventually, we aim at uh, spanning the globe and really making Mercosur a more open and integrated trade agreement. 
Now, one of, one of the things that uh, it, it's a hot topic uh, here in, in Washington is the, uh, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership that the uh, administration is working to, to get through Congress, um, which would, I think, in many ways change some of the dynamics in the, in, uh, in the face of, of, of trade in the, in the hemisphere um, with, with this, uh, not, not only the new 21st century global standards that are part of the Trans-Pacific mm -hmm. Partnership, but the new regulations and, and, and whatnot that are part of the deal. What, what impact would a signed, and it's already ratified mm -hmm. at this point, TPP have on, on Argentina? Is this something that you're, you're yeah. thinking about and, and, mm. and planning for? Well, we're generally very optimistic on the movement towards more integrated trade, and we hope to be a part of that integration sooner rather than later. Obviously, it's going to take time. We're just, uh, you know, yesterday at the World Bank, we were talking with some, some colleagues about the need to revamp our international trade negotiations, uh, you know, area of government, um, because we, you know, we've been sort of dormant for the past decade. So, you know, we're looking forward to uh, traveling more, to engaging constructively, and we, we hope to be a part of the agreement, the Trans-Pacific Agreement, eventually. We understand it's going to take some time. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's great news. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that there's plenty of time for questions. So if you have a question, uh, raise your hand. I'm sure there'll be a lot, and I'll ask you to identify yourself. Um, and, uh, and I see the first hand over here in the second, second row. If you could please name an, an affiliation before asking your question. Buenos dias, Secretario. Juan Carlos Iturregui uh, with Dentons. Uh, it's now the largest law firm in the world. It, it, it was grad, a gradual process of 110 years. Um, but uh, the best performing economies in, in the Americas have something in common, a free trade agreement with the U.S., whether it's the Dominican Republic, Peru, Chile, so forth, and Mexico. So, so I'm glad you, are, you have free trade agreements in, in your mind, whether, whether they're in the context of Mercosur, which by many definitions have been uh, iffy at best uh, in terms of economic growth or a freestanding free a trade agreement. But the other thing that, that all these countries have in, in, in my limited experience is a great agency dedicated to shepherd foreign direct investment. So in, in Peru is Pro Inversión and, and the DR is the CEI and so forth. So I, I wonder what is the thinking and I, I know you're here, uh, what is the thinking so that we can go and, and uh, not have unnecessary headaches? Mm -hmm. We will always have headaches uh, and, mm -hmm. and due diligence, but we just need a one-stop shop in order to, to understand the new Argentina. Thank and, you. And what you need is what you get. You will have a concierge that will give you, you know, Tylenol if you have a headache. <laughs> uh, his name is Juan Procaccini, and he heads the... Uh, Argentine Investment Agency, which uh, was, and he was recently instated by President Macri. This agency uh, combines both export promotion and investment uh, promotion, and uh, it is the one-stop shop for investors wanting to, to go to Argentina. So you're welcome, and we, will, we can certainly get you in touch with him. And hopefully a glass of Malbec as well. W that uh, will depend on the preferences of the investor, but uh, yes, absolutely. We also have other fantastic wines in Argentina. I see a question there in the Peter in the fifth row there. Thank you, uh, Peter Rashish from Transnational Strategy Group. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for that encouraging and optimistic um, presentation. I wanted to um, dig a little further into trade policy. Um, the um, U.S. Trade Representative Mike Froman has said that the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership is a platform which other countries eventually will be able to join, uh, and that's welcome. My sense is that's welcome as a way to strengthen the ability of like-minded countries to defend uh, rules-based international economic governance. Assuming that TTIP is uh, successful, is would Argentina either alone or in combination with its Mercosur partners uh, have the ambition to join TTIP one day? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, certainly, Argentina, as a strategic concept, our, our government believes that the best thing for Argentina is a rules-based international framework. We are definitely not a, a military power of any kind, so you know we, we like rules. Um, we, at the same time, we have this sort of free spirit, and we've been so, somewhat irrespectful, <laughs> you know, we, we haven't respected rules as much as we should. But um, 
but we believe it's in the national interest of Argentina to really you know, engage in, in, in many of these agreements that will tie us constructively to the, to the global economy. I, we believe that it's going, it's going to take time. The president has been very clear in that the objective for the production ministry in which I work and for the finance ministry is for a competitive Argentina, a more integrated Argentina. Uh, but obviously, we have to go step by step. Eventually, I, I think that we will get there, but I, you know, I wouldn't expect it to happen this year, for example. That's just in the second row. Uh, hello, my name is Mark Botsford. I'm with Botsford Global, and I have a couple of questions. One is, um, uh, you've made the news. Your office has made the news recently in Argentina about the condition of your office um, and the, you know, the, the whole secretario. And I was wondering what your impressions are as far as how you can normalize everything, how, how much time it will take to, to normalize your office. And then secondly, um, there's also a raging debate in, now in Argentina about managing expectations in order to um, uh, you know, prepare the population for, uh, for, a, for a gradualist approach. How do you, um, how, how do you see the upcoming um, um, State of the Union address by by Macri with Congress, and wh whether or not you know what, whether or not he's going to, without scapegoating or or name calling, whether or not he'll be able to to manage th those expectations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Well, you know, after a decade of populism, the state of the state is uh, calamitous. Of course, I mean the the focus was definitely never on the efficiency of processes and of, of, what, uh, of what each office should do, but rather on centralizing power, on increasing the government's power, and on patronage in terms of you know, using, using the state as a, as a political tool. And therefore, the, the, the state we found, the Secretary of, of Commerce, um, is not different than, than you know, the average situation in the government. Maybe it's a bit worse because the, our area was specifically used as a, you know, as a tool uh, to engage you know, in, in negotiations with companies to lower prices, to control prices, to close the economy. So, so really, I mean, there was maybe more activity than in other areas. Um, and that's a huge challenge, obviously. It's a huge management challenge. Anybody who's worked in a large organization understands that you, know, you can't change from one day to the next the culture of an organization. Government procurement rules and, and labor rules make this change even slower. But I believe that we've shown that in a, you know, very quickly we've been able to implement uh, important changes. And we did this because we have a cohesive team that's been working together for the past you know, at least five years, in part in the government of the city of Buenos Aires, in part in Fundación Pensar, in part in the party. Uh, but, you know, it's many people that are working in government and have had past experiences have said, you know, this is the first time when I really can talk openly with people in different ministries and we can coordinate. So, you know, I, I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to overcome these, these problems. Um, and uh, sorry, your second question? Uh, Managing expectations. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. The you know, in the twenty first century, expectations uh, you know move very fast, and people want results now. Uh, and at the same time, nobody wants to pay costs now. And what you know, we we didn't uh, enter government with a with a deep crisis, and therefore there's no real demand for significant economic change, and there's no patience for um, for uh, I would say a recession to take inflation to one digit in three months. And of course, that is one of the reasons why we're going for a gradualist policy. But that's not the only reason. The, the real reason, you know, the deeper reason, is that we don't believe that you know, a strong adjustment is politic, makes political sense. I mean, we need the changes that we're doing to be sustainable. And we've seen that many of these deep adjustments end up not being sustainable. So you know, we, we hope to keep working in this gradualist uh, stance to make the reforms that we're working on sustainable over the medium and the long run. We, we, you know, we, don't, we want to avoid the perpetual pendular movements in Argentina. You, you, mentioned, the, you mentioned the price controls uh, that, that were uh, negotiated as part of the, the previous administration. What is, what, is your, what is the new administration doing to help to wean 
domestic business off some of those price controls, especially I, I think Argentine exporters. And now that you've you know normalizing mm -hmm. normalized the trade regime, there are, ex are exporters that you know are not used to being able to take advantage of what this mm -hmm. what this what this means. And there's probably some um, assistance that could be provided mm -hmm. from the government to help exporters be able to take advantage of this international more international mm -hmm. marketplace. And, You'd be surprised. I mean, I, I, as I said before, Argentina, Argentines and Argentine companies are very resilient, very adaptive, and uh, I think that they're very quickly realizing the new context and moving to take advantage of those opportunities. I'm very optimistic that that's going to be the case and that very quickly they're going to be able to uh, you know, increase production, increase exports, and uh, the more investment we have, the more opportunities they're going to be able to find. So uh, you know, I, I'm not worried about that. I, I don't think we need the government uh, assisting them in this, in this uh, adaptation. I have to say, I have had a couple of interesting experiences with younger managers who over, you know, maybe 30 years old, so all of their professional career has been under price controls and a closed economy. So it takes them a while to say, you know, oh wait, this works like this, but very quickly they realize, so you know, that's yeah. just a, a, a colorful footnote right. in a generally right. optimistic uh, outlook. Question there, actually I saw the first question there on the second row, um, Andrew, right here. Thank you, Kelly Myman with McClarty Associates. Uh, during Brazil's boom, one of the strategies that they employed to try to draw investment was uh, imposing local content requirements. I'm sorry, uh, imposing, imposing local, local content? content requirements. Uh -huh. um, and, and in my experience, it ended up being, in many cases, more of an impediment to investment and competitiveness, as opposed to something that ended up, uh, you know, being mm -hmm. on the positive side. Um, I'm wondering, as you're looking at how best to draw investment, how you're viewing local content requirements versus allowing companies that are putting new factories and investments mm -hmm. in the country to be able to access global supply chains. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, our, our main goal, as I, as I stated, is to attract investment by global companies uh, to Argentina. At the, at the same time, we want small and medium enterprises in Argentina to engage and get involved in global value chains in a, in a constructive way. Um, and finally, eventually, we want Argentine companies to become multinationals and, and global companies. So, you know, we're, we're really working on a strategy that uh, moves in that, in that direction. There are industries in which Argentina has these local content requirements as well. Um, we hope that that isn't uh, an impediment for overall investment, but we, we will have this uh, new investment agency to work with different sectors in order to find the, you know, the best mix of regulations. We, we don't, you know, we're, we're agnostic regarding uh, instruments. We want to use the instruments uh, in the best way, the, the, you know, in, in, in what works in different industries. So we, we hope to have a very pragmatic approach. We take a question from the, from the back there. Um. <laughs> Last, I think this is, I think you're in the last row there. Well, actually, why don't we take two questions? We'll take your question, then the gentleman standing up there. Jessica Soto with Southern Pulse. So, especially in the mining and energy industries, you want a sustainable investment. Um, and many companies, I think, in the hemisphere, run into issues with local communities. And we've seen recently in Argentina with lithium. Um, projects that some local communities have had clashes with those developments. So I wanted to ask, does the federal government have a role as a mediator or as a regulator mm -hmm. um, to try and mitigate some of those problems? And if so, what specific steps are they contemplating? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take the other, we'll take, there's a question in the, standing up in the back as well. Uh, Winston Wilkinson. Um, this might not be your, your area of expertise, but given that uh, with the new election or with the results of the election, you'll have uh, capital looking to come into Argentina um, and financial capital looking to for uh, looking at the capital markets. What, what are you doing right now to uh, to open up the capital markets to attract international investors? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, so first to the mining question, clearly mining we believe is a sector with huge potential in, in Argentina and the government has reduced the, well has eliminated the export taxes on mining and that we believe is a, is a signal that uh, we're sending to the world saying you know we, we want to, to promote this sector. 
At the same time, Argentina is a federal country like the US and the, state, the provinces in Argentina have great power to regulate uh, many areas and mining is one of them. In fact, um, we believe that what we need to develop the mining sector is a, a federal mining agreement in order to coordinate legislation at the national and at the, at the local level. And part of that uh, role of the government, as, as, you, as you well said, is to, is to coordinate the, this legislative part and to mediate when, when there are conflicts. And we, we want to have a, a very active participation in the mining sector. In fact, we have a, a, very, a very good team in the, in the mining uh, secretary. In fact, the, the current mining secretary was previously in that role during the 90s, so he knows the sector very well. Uh, and, and they will have a very proactive role in sort of smoothing over the, the bumps that there might be for, for investment. In terms of financial investment, uh, well, you know, we've, we've unified the exchange rate. We're uh, closing a deal with the holdouts, which were maybe two of the, the main constraints for investment in, in Argentina. But I have to say, our priority is, is real investment, is, is investment in, in the real sector, productive investment. And of course, if on the back of that there's financial investors that want to come in and, and strengthen the, the capital markets in Argentina, they're, they're welcome, but I, you know, I, I don't think we, we have a specific policy to promote uh, financial investment. In fact, we might be worried that uh, too much financial investment will increase volatility and might overvalue the exchange rate, and uh, that might be negative for, for real production. There's, there's time for one more question because the secretary, um, unfortunately, cannot spend the entire morning with us <laughs> and, has, uh, and has other meetings today. Uh, I'll take your question there, sir, in the fourth row. Andrew, if you just, can, if you just wait a second for the microphone. Charles with Weber Shanwick. Um, just obviously, economic policy, favorable economic trade and investment policies is important to attract investment. But in today's global economy, uh, what is your marketing strategy to promote and sell Argentina to global business and U.S. business? Hmm. Well, that's, that's a good question. I mean, we don't have a marketing strategy in place yet, but I'm sure that uh, we're working on it. In the meantime, we're taking advantage of the excitement that there is in the world about the changes in Argentina, and we're traveling a lot. A lot uh, you know, different members of government are traveling, are engaging directly with companies, with governments. Uh, we're very excited with President Hollande's vis visit this week and with President Obama's visit in March. Uh, and, um, you know, President Macri traveled to Davos. So really we're, we're going on a more like a um, uh, traveling salesman <laughs> strategy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I completely agree with you that we have to work on a, on a really clear professional strategy in order to, to send out the message we want to send. And uh, I guess uh, well, with that... I, uh, I think this is part of the marketing strategy yeah. right here. Secretary <laughs> Brown you is, is your marketing strategy. Um, it's part of, and I, well, I want to also just end by congratulating you and congratulating President Macri and the new administration mm -hmm. on a, an amazing first, first few months. And we look forward to hosting you and, and others and other your colleagues many mm -hmm. times in, in the future. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, again, thank um, our partners, Council of the Americas and Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And a big thanks to Maria Fernanda Perez in the first mm -hmm. row who put together this entire event in, on five days' notice. So uh, thank you, and thank you all for coming. Thank you.